Okay, so this video is looking at a deeper dive into friction. So we introduced the idea of friction when we went over the types of forces that exist, and now we're gonna look at more of the mathematical nature of friction. So friction, just kind of review, friction is a force that opposes the motion of an object. And this has to be like the object is either moving or it is attempting to move or trying to move. So like right now, if I'm just standing here and I'm not like trying to move at all, there's no friction acting on me. I either have to be in the process of moving or being like trying to start moving. Okay? And within friction, there's actually two categories of friction that we're gonna see. One is um, what's called surface friction. And this is friction between two solid objects. So basically, like I've got one object sliding across another object. And then the other type or category of friction is fluid friction. And this is going to be the friction an object experience, a solid object experiences as it is moving through a fluid. go into this a little bit more in depth in a different online lecture because um, it has its own set of equations um, and its own kind of mathematical model for this. So we're going to focus on surface friction right now in this lecture. And within surface friction, there's actually two categories or two groupings of friction. Okay, so with our surface friction, we have something called static friction. And static friction is the friction that most be overcome to just get an object moving. So this is friction, so wobbly, that must be overcome to get an object moving. And in terms of its symbol, so if you recall, the symbol for friction was F sub F. And if we're going to focus in on, well, this is static friction, we would put a sub S as well. Uh, some texts put a little comma there. Um, whether you do or not, I'm not going to be persnickety about that. But it just symbolizes that this is the force of friction, specifically static friction. The equation for this is that the force of static friction is going to be less than or equal to, we'll kind of talk about that. It's the first time we've had this kind of like inequality here. Less than or equal to something called mu. Mu. It's a Greek letter. Okay. Uh, mu s times the normal force that an object is experiencing. Okay. So this Greek letter, it's like a U with kind of like a long tail in the front. Um, so specifically, this mu s is called the coefficient of static friction. And it's essentially a measure of like how grippy or rough a surface is. So the higher the mu value, the more rough, the more textured a material is. Um, and the lower a mu value, the more smooth the surface is. Um, and these, we're gonna see, these are pretty low values. They typically are less than one, unless you have a pretty grippy surface. Um, so we'll see that. So this idea that friction is less than or equal to means that static friction is it's a reaction force. So if you go to push something, it's going to react. Static friction is going to react and oppose you however much it can oppose you until it can no longer like match you anymore. And once you've overcome the maximum value of static friction, then the object will move. Okay. Um, so if I were to say F, F max, the maximum value would be this mu times the normal force. Like that's the maximum static friction a surface could exert on a particular object that's resting on it, okay? And we'll kind of talk more conceptually about this when we get back into class. Okay. 
So that's static friction. That's like the friction you have to overcome just to get the object moving. The, once you're moving, you are working against kinetic friction. So this is the friction that an object experiences as it is moving along the surface. Oh, so wobbly. So this is the idea of we've overcome that maximum static friction value. The object is now moving along the surface. Now it is working against kinetic friction. Um, its symbol is pretty similar. It is gonna be force of friction, but this is now kinetic. And then again, the equation is similar. This is just gonna be an equal series. So the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu k times the normal force, where mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction. And something to note is that mu k is always less for a given material, like for a given surface. Mu k is always going to be less than mu s which means that the static friction that you have to overcome to get the object moving is always going to be bigger than the amount of friction you're gonna be working against to keep the object moving, okay? So if I were to kind of like model like a graph, like if this was time and this was the force, and I were trying to like tug something, I was trying to get it moving, I'd have to like, my force would be zero to begin with, and I'd be tugging and tugging and tugging and tugging and tugging, and then right here. Right here is where I would have made my like maximum static friction and then here now would be my kinetic friction. So my static friction is going to oppose me, oppose me, oppose me, oppose me, oppose me until it can no longer oppose me. Like I've reached that maximum value that the surface can like give and then I just work against kinetic friction. Okay. And we'll see this in like the lab that we do. You'll actually make these graphs here. So let's go ahead and look at one example um, of now that we have friction, what does that do to our analysis of the situation? Let me erase this. So you have this already in your workbook here. Um, you're driving a 25 regular car at a constant speed of 14 meters a second on a wet but straight level road as you approach an intersection. Traffic light turns red, you slam on the brakes, car's wheels lock, tires begin skidding. So drama. Um, the car slides to a halt at a distance of 25 meters. Okay, so we're not given a whole lot of like number values. We know that I have this constant speed, ooh, constant speed, that should be a, like a light bulb there. Um, I have this 2,500, I have this 25 meters. So let's kind of translate this into a list of things that we know and into a physical model. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna put this down here on the board so that I have lots of space. Okay, so in terms of kind of like what I know, um, I am, let me just put in my values of 2,500 kilograms. So that's my mass. Um, I know I have this speed of 14 meters per second and it's constant. That leads me to know something else. That my acceleration is zero. And I know that I am skidding for 25 meters. So I would take this and now I want to give it to a visual model. So here's my car. Amazing car, it's got a mass, it's moving, 14 meters per second, constant. So I have no acceleration and then I move this distance, 25 meters. Ah, what has changed now? This is my initial velocity, and now my final velocity is zero. So on this leg of the trip, like this is my initial, right? 
then I become a V value of zero. So I definitely have an acceleration. Okay, so in this journey here, this changes. This changes, and now I have an acceleration. In fact, I have an acceleration that's like going that direction. That's my acceleration, because I'm slowing down. And remember, whatever velocity and acceleration are opposite directions, they're slowing down. So our goal is to figure out what the mu value is. That's what we're trying to find. And in this case, I'm moving, so it's going to be mu k. And if I'm, I'm trying to find mu k, I have to think about forces. There's no other way around it. So if I look at my model here and I say, okay, well, I need to go through the steps of solving a force problem. So I need to draw a force diagram, do a free body diagram right here. So here's my car. Um, always start with your weight, your force of gravity. So there's my force of gravity. I have a normal force. And the only force that's causing me to slow down is this force of friction, which happens to be in the same direction as acceleration. Okay. So first step in a force problem is draw the free body diagram, draw the force diagram. Second step is to write out your force equation. So if I think about my Fy, I have normal force going up, I have Fg going down. So I'm going to say Fn minus Fg is equal to Ay, but this car is not moving up and down. So this is equal to zero. So this is going to guide me to the fact that Fn is going to equal Fg. And Fg, I know, is equal to Mg. That's my y equation. I need to do my x equation. Horizontally, the only thing I have is force of friction. And I'm going to say negative force of friction. And I know you're like, why are you doing negative? The direction of motion should always be considered positive. The direction of motion should always be considered positive. So this is a negative FF should equal to negative ma and it's negative because it's in the opposite direction okay um what can i substitute it well i can say that these are gonna cancel right and i can say oh i know our equation for friction now friction is equal to mu in this case mu k times my normal force and that's going to equal ma and i actually have an equation or a relationship for my normal force i know that my normal force here is equal to mg. So I can take this and plug it into there. So I have mu k times mg is equal to ma. Some things can cancel. So I have oh, mu k can equal a over g. That's great. Except I don't know what a is yet. So how can you use what else you know to find what A is? You know that the initial velocity was 14. You know the final velocity is zero. You know the distance is 25. So you could, you could use kinematics. Um, and think about our kinematic equations. It would be the third equation. V squared is equal to V naught squared plus two A delta X. My V final is zero. My V initial is 14 squared plus two times a times my delta x of 25. And this will allow you to find what a is. So I'm gonna leave it at this because I believe you have the ability to calculate. Calculate what the a value is. And once you have that a value, plug it into here, divide it by 9.8, and that is your mu value. And we will go over the answer to this in class.